Hi, Box Modders. So this is the first edition of Mike Reads the Files. I was talking to uh, talking to the group and uh, seemed to get a pretty good reaction, uh, some, some misconceptions about what this was going to be like. Uh, so I wanted to give you an example of, of my vision for it. Uh, I want this to be helpful, but uh, I also want it to be entertaining. And uh, honestly, I want it to be entertaining more than I want it to be helpful. Uh, just, just to be fair. Uh, but anyway, if this is if this is how you learn listening to me talk, uh, then uh, fucking so be it. Uh, here we go. Uh, what is PWM? PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. A circuit is turned on and off rapidly to create a lower average voltage at an output. Now, this is the basis for almost every regulator we use in mods. I have our Murata, GE, Delta, Emerson, Evolve, and Yai Hai, Yai Hai, whatever. It's Chinese. I don't give a shit. Uh, regulators use it. Um, <clears throat> these are all referred to as switch mode power supplies. It's a really good explanation of how they work. Uh, click it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, Afrotech Mods uh, video on it. Uh, that guy's fucking awesome. Um, and the rest of this is set up like a like an FAQ. Uh, I gotta open a, a fresh 211 here. Mm. 8.1% deliciousness. Um, so this is an FAQ, and that's pretty much the files section. is is a collection of questions I've had to answer repeatedly, and uh, I didn't want to type anymore. So uh, so for all of all all of you who are like, why don't you just tell me the answer? Um, I did already, so uh, you just didn't want to go find it uh, right in front of your face. So anyway, um, how is this PWM set up different than a switching regulator? Well, as you saw in the video, um, because uh, you would just uh, skip the video like a fucking douchebag, uh, there can be a lot that goes into making uh, a switching regulator. Feedback, filtering, all the kind of stuff that makes those regulators very complex. Uh, they produce a flat output with very little ripple. Uh, PWM described here outputs a square wave fully on it, fully off, over and over. It's unfiltered. Uh, it's and it's also slower, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, and it makes the whole thing less complex, which leads to the next part. Why? Why would you use PWM? Well, the the reason it was created is people kept asking in the group, uh, "How can I adjust the voltage on my MOSFET mod?" Uh, some some folks ask uh, if connecting a potentiometer. Uh, to a MOSFET is a way to go. Well, it, it, only if you uh, want to make a very large mod with uh, that's mostly hand warmer with a giant potentiometer. Um, so instead of doing that nonsense and burning off, you know, uh, half or more of your power through a potentiometer, um, PWM is how we achieve that eff efficiently and effectively. Um, Derek Jones suggested it. Uh, by, by pulsing from zero to battery voltage or very near battery voltage. Um, the MOSFET is either totally on or totally off, which means it's conducting at a very low resistance or it is uh, not conducting and it is at a very high resistance um, or impedance, uh, as, as the case may be, even though resistance is, is really uh, the... it covers everything we need to cover in, uh, in DC. This is still DC. It doesn't matter if it's a pulse, it's still pulsing at DC. Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't sit in the gray area, which is what we really call the active region, where it acts like a variable resistor. Uh, this makes PWM ideal for a drop-in modification to existing MOSFET mods. That was my vision for this to begin with, was it would be a smooth transition from series MOSFET mods to PWM mods. And uh, somehow you all make it much more complex than that. Um, why does it buzz, beep, whine, make a noise, uh, whatever? Um, electronic switching is noisy business uh, in all applications, um, especially where it isn't filtered. Uh, it just happens that this PWM runs at 1.5 kilohertz, which is squarely within the audible range. All the uh, all the high-end DC-DC converters run at like 150 kilohertz or even higher, um, 500 kilohertz, whatever, and so you. You can't hear. You can't hear that. Um, so that's why you don't hear it because you can't. Um, <clears throat> anyway, if the wine bothers you that much, uh, use a higher resistance pot 
Uh, an example of that would be 100 kiloohms to 200 kilo kiloohms, uh, and I I don't I don't know why you guys get so stuck on this, but it can be I mean it can be anything higher than than 10k. Uh, you just I'm giving you an example of uh, of what would work. Um, the higher the resistance on the pot, the lower the frequency. So you have to balance that out with okay I'm going to use uh, a very l a lower frequency, you'll st it'll still be audible, but it will not penetrate as well. The lower frequency will not uh, will not may will not carry as well, um, and that's that's the point. Uh, someone asked me, can I use a two hundred twenty ko? Fucking of course you can, uh, but the problem is when you when you go into changing components in a circuit but you don't understand the circuit, you've, you've already you've put the cart before the horse. You've already lost. Uh, because you have to understand the basic design before you try to change the design. And uh, I, that's a, that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be an issue. That shouldn't be something I have to explain to you guys. Uh, but it is. Um, so no other components have to be changed, again. Should be clear. Isn't. I don't know why. Um, why does my voltmeter uh, insert odd behavior here? We're talking about reading, reading too low, flickering, uh, not working at all, whatever. Uh, let's think about this for a moment. You have a device that pulses uh, on off uh, at a not real high frequency. Uh, the LED voltmeter wants to see a flat output. So uh, some meters work. Some meters don't. I have links in the handy links file of meters that work. I even say they work with PWM or not. Um, and uh, even the ones that do work are inaccurate because they try to use a mean average instead of giving you an RMS. Uh, you need a, a, an oscilloscope. It doesn't have to be digital. Uh, I don't want to sound prejudiced. Uh, but it has to have a, um, an RMS readout. Otherwise, you're going to be doing some calculations. So even if it's an analog oscilloscope, it would still have to have a uh, some kind of RMS indication on there. Um, and I, I don't know if that even exists. Uh, digital oscilloscopes, yes, they do it. It's a, you can make them display all kinds of things, peak to peak. Um, you can do math with the two channels. Anyway, um, and not with a with a quote unquote true RMS multimeter. Uh, those still don't show RMS in that case. That, those are designed for showing very accurate RMS AC values. This is not AC. Uh, stop being obsessed with the number on the screen and simply enjoy the vape. It can give you a relative indication of how high up it is turned. Uh, and that's, that's all you can ask for uh, without programming your own device to do it. Building or programming your own device to do it. Why are there two diagrams? Under certain conditions, and we'll talk about it more, 555 timers are known to fail by being stressed too hard by switching a MOSFET under heavy load. This is typically uh, three cells in series and up where this happens. Uh, because even though you're switching the MOSFET on and off, that takes energy to do. And the, as you, if you kick the voltage up and you maintain the load, what happens to the current? It kicks up. So this, the, the stress of switching that MOSFET on and off is, is relayed to the 555, and it simply can't keep up with it. It will overload it uh, under certain conditions. Um, people ask me, well, it's an, um, I, I run a 3S, and it's not, it's not uh, PFET buffered. Um, why, does, why, how, why does it work? Well, because, like I said, <laughs> it doesn't always happen, guys. Uh, you, you have to have some some. Uh, it's never not all things are black and white. You have to have some fuzzy logic in there and do some critical thinking. Uh, so the standard diagram was modified to correct that issue with uh, PFET buffering, and uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So which diagram do I use? Well, like I said, uh, if you're using a, a 2S, a standard diagram uh, with standard 555, which I'll explain more in a minute, it's fine. Uh, I, I haven't been able to make a 555 timer die by using a super low uh, resistance thing. I've gone down to like 0.09, and, uh, and it, it doesn't kill it on 2S. Um, but if you're running 
uh, point, point oh nine on a three S, it will, it will probably kill the, the, the timer in, in a short order. Um, so uh, you can use the PFET buffered version on 2S, but it's not necessary. If you're making 3S or 4S PWM, that's where I highly recommend you use that PFET buffered version. The standard 555. Uh, I already said timer failure is known to happen otherwise. If you plan on using a 1S for whatever fucking reason, uh, single or parallel PWM, you must use the PFET buffer diagram with the CMOS timer. Uh, that's because the 1S setup requires the CMOS timer's lower minimum input voltage, and the CMOS timer requires PFET buffering. See how these fit together? These are like Duplo blocks. You know, we're not even into Legos yet. Um, which 555 do I use? Well, uh, 555 timers have been around uh, for a very long time and uh, longer than you, uh, most of you. Um, <clears throat> and there are a lot of variants. Use one that does not say CMOS anywhere in the diagram, data sheet, description, anything, unless you want to use a single or parallel PWM. Uh, if you want to use a single or parallel PWM, you have to use one that says CMOS somewhere, data sheet, diagram, description, uh, and make sure it has a minimum input voltage low enough uh, for that application. Um, can I get a parts list? No. Fuck no. Uh, what parts lists tend to Don Henderson tend to keep, uh, tend to uh, enable people um, to skip learning, essentially. Uh, people who, and people who don't want to learn how the circuit works tend to ask for parts lists. Um, and so, no, you can't have one because uh, I don't, I don't want you to be lazy. You are capable and every single person uh, listening to this, uh, you are all capable of, of building, of learning how to build this and building it. Um, the only thing stopping you is, is your, your your mental block is saying you can't, saying you don't want to. Uh, fucking do it, all right? Um, don't make me do the Shia LaBeouf fucking, just do it, do it. Yeah, uh, just, yeah. Uh, how does it all work? If you go, t if you want to go see the basic circuit explained in obnoxious detail, um, skip to about seven minutes in that video. Um, it really is a good video. No, no joke. It's an EEV blog. Um, he's explaining some other stuff. Uh, you can watch the whole video if you want to. It's good, but that's where he really gets into it. You can also check out my YouTube channel, Relay 1974. I've done a few PWM mods videos there. I've done a lot of videos since then, too. Um, there's also an unrelated video featuring a sock puppet, which is fucking great. So, with all that out of the way, uh, the set this setup allows you to, average, to vary the average output uh, voltage to the atomizer without the use of a complex regulator. Obviously, if you haven't gathered that yet, there it is. Uh, the 555 gets wonky at low 3 volts. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it works incorrectly, so we don't use it there. Um, so single or parallel setups are out of the question. It'll work with up to 18 volts in, so a 3S or 4S is, is possible. Uh, like I said, a series only variable voltage diagram using the 555 timer IC. Uh, here's an example of 555 spec sheet. Um, click it. Uh, read the fucking spec sheet. I want to solder a PWM setup right now. Buy a breadboard. Uh, I say again, buy a breadboard. Build it without soldering anything before you attempt a final product. That's what breadboards are there for, so you can learn. You can play with the components. You can lay them out however you fucking want. That's the beauty of a breadboard. It's there for you. I'm not telling you this to try to hold back your ambition. Uh, this is this is all for you guys. Uh, this is going to make you a better technician, better modder, and, and better at understanding stuff. Um, and these things are virtually impossible to troubleshoot online. Uh, so do me a favor. Try to make one on your own uh, without soldering it before asking me why your finished PWM box doesn't work because that happens. That's not an exaggeration. People will box the fucking thing up and then... 
try to hit the atomizer and it doesn't work how they think. Um, there's a link to a breadboard kit, or actually a, uh, I think it's a search result of uh, breadboard uh, from eBay. And there's, pick whatever fucking one you like. Uh, I don't care, but get one. Uh, for those of you worried about fucking up your 555, use a socket. Uh, it'll let you pull the 555 right out, swap it. Uh, people also build the, all the components onto the socket. It makes a very neat little com compact package. There's a link to sockets, so don't ever say I didn't give you a link to a fucking part. Um, when you are ready to make one, use some strip board, uh, perf board, whatever. That's your next step from breadboard is you can take those components as you lay them out on the breadboard and you can put them on the strip board the same way. I even have strip board diagrams. Um, there's a link to some strip board. Uh, what's with the slide switches? Uh, and I'm going to scroll because this is, this is important. So the slide switches. Um, you can only see part of it there. But this one especially, if you don't know how a, how a slide switch works, Google it. Um, you know, it's easy. The slide switches aren't like specific to mods. Google how it works, figure it out, and then trace your finger uh, across, the, across the circuit. Um, where your finger goes is where the circuit completes. So that's how you would eliminate the, the switch. People ask me, like, how do I eliminate the switch? Um, that, that way, by understanding the circuit, that's how. Uh, bypass and shutdown modes are fully, completely optional, but shutdown is nice. It's a master off switch to prevent draining the cells and not using the mod for long periods. Yes, it will drain your batteries dry over a long enough period. And that long enough period is only like a couple of weeks. It doesn't take that long. Um, like it's not an astro astronomical amount of time. Uh, so th that's it. Um, you know, look at the diagrams. The diagrams have pictures of actual components now. Uh, it, it's all there for you. It, it really is. I, I did this for you guys. Um, there's a strip board layout. Uh, this is, you can lay the stuff out exactly this way on a, on a breadboard. You can lay it out this way on this piece of strip board, put it in a mod, and it'll fucking go. Uh, same thing here with the PFET version. Uh, it's <clears throat> just a couple of different things. We have the PFET on board. You can put it on board or not. Uh, the infet setup. So uh, that's that's it, guys. That's this is how I envisioned uh, Mike reads the files. Um, let me know what you think about it. Let me know uh, how you think it should change. Uh, please give me something useful. It doesn't even have to be serious. I just want something constructive. Uh, we can, you know, we can do shenanigans whenever. Uh, but let's let, let me know how I can make this better, and and I'll consider it. Uh, haters keep hating, keep sucking these nuts. Read the fucking pen post, and uh, ladies, gentlemen, and uh, combinations thereof. Uh, I am out.